Now, to be revealed, the atom. So what was the atom you had in mind? What's that? Lithium. So erase this, this, this. And did you have a charge in mind? You have plus three or minus three. Okay, that's fine. So she wants a lithium three minus. Lithium two, three minus. Okay? Um, no, probably not. Possible, but that's okay, just for fun, right? Okay, lithium is 1s2, 2s. One. Okay? What I'm going to do, uh, just to account for the electrons, okay, to remember that there's three extra electrons that I normally would have with a neutral molecule, I'm just going to say this one's three minus. You know, so I have a neutral and three minus, and when they add together, there's three minus. Is that okay? Just to keep in my mind, I'm randomly picking the one on the left to do that with. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Can you split it between the two? You could also split it, so make a 2 minus and a minus 1, whatever. I, I would have split it if it was an even number, but I'm just putting it all on one side. This is more bookkeeping. What's most important, what's going to end up in the middle. So this will be a 1s2, like I have three electrons, 2s2, 2p1. Did I add enough electrons? One. I need one more electron. Is that okay? Should I add three electrons to that? Fix it. Okay, so now I'm going to do my electron filling. On the left hand side, I have 1s2, a 2s2, and a 2p2. Is that okay? On the right hand side, I have 1s2, 2s1. Done. This one's going to be a little funky because you thought of a very abnormal example. Okay. Uh, one, oh, there's a total of four. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is, this is where it's going to be a little abnormal. Uh, three and one, really one of these electrons would have been down there. to its lower energy state. That's what... So I'm actually going to put it down there. So like kind of what you mentioned, we're actually splitting the difference a little bit. Really, we're going to make this a 2 minus and this a minus. So this is a 2 and this is a 1. So it's just kind of funky. When you have something that high a charge, you're like, what the heck am I going to do with these electrons? But essentially, instead of putting those two electrons, I'm going to put this one down here because we we'll 4 in the middle. And it actually, what normally... What always happens is it'll fill the lowest energies first before going to the next one. So once all that's filled and there's nothing left, then, then you go. Filled. Then you go to the next one. Exactly right. And there's one more. Will we get something kind of like that? Like this, if it's like probably not with that high of a charge. Mm -hmm. That's you don't see things with like two minus or two plus. The other direction is about as high as you'll see. Okay. So now let's do everything else though. Bond order. Number, so you go to the one that has unfilled, so that's the P's. You know, this is totally full, this is full, so don't worry about those. P's, um, number of electrons in bonding orbitals, these are the bonding, there's one. Minus in antibonding, there's none there. Divided by two, uh, one half. So it's a half a bond. It's a very less likely species, theoretically possible. Okay. The other thing is, is it para or diamagnetic? Para. It's para. How do you know that? Because right. there's an unpaired electron. There's an unpaired electron. So. One thing you'll want to know that your book or other people can opt not to draw core electrons. So can opt not to draw draw these. So you might not see these in all the pictures in the book. It also, if it feels like it, can opt not to draw this one too. Anything that's full, sometimes you just don't draw it. Even though it's there, it's just 
They're thinking, oh, we know that you know it's there, so let's not draw it. Okay. Yeah. So then, if there's a bonding order, there's bonding order of zero. That means there's still core uh, electrons and stuff. That's what it basically means. It can never equal. There could never be an, um, a bonding order of zero. There could be a bond order of zero. Just that molecule, whatever it is, wouldn't exist. Because mm -hmm. bond order of zero means zero bond. So you see that with helium too. It would have a bond order of zero. It would still have electrons, but the bond order would be zero. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a question too? No? Um, yeah, but... Okay. Can you briefly show that? How you okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you also do the Lewis structure of that? You can't draw the Lewis structure of this. <laughs> that's a problem. So, that's why Lewis structure breaks down. There's only... It seems like there's a lot of Lewis problems, but that compared to the number of possible molecules, it's very nil. Uh, if you want to draw something that had a bond order of zero, helium-2 is an example. Uh, it only has S electrons, so it's super easy. You have a 1s2 with another 1s2. You have a sigma 1s and a sigma 1s star. <coughs> helium only has 1s. So it's total four. One, two, three, four. That's it. So I'm only drawing this part of the picture down here. Yeah. And then the bond order. Number in the bonding electron, bonding orbital, uh, two minus number of electrons in anti-bonding orbital, two divided by two, that's zero. So that means there's no bond. So that means it definitely doesn't exist either practically or theoretically. Also, when we're doing all these in our class, we're not doing any calculations besides the bond order. But all of these can be experimentally determined. There's equations to find all the energy levels and all that sort of stuff. But uh, we don't have that kind of fun in our class. We have a different kind of fun.